Hi, this is podcasting for screenwriters. A little something I'm calling a side hustle in audio dramas. Hi, <laughs> I'm Ann Kimbrough. I'm a screenwriter, producer, podcaster, and definitely an all around content creator. And I'm always looking for something new, a new area to uh, put my skills to use. And uh, that's how I came upon podcasting. But you still might want to ask, why podcasting? <laughs> well, right now, uh, podcasting has been going through an amazing growth period. I mean, podcasts have been around for a long time, don't get me wrong, but they are, the traction is uh, is getting to a, a, a big peak, a, a golden era, if you will, of podcasting. And so that means that their needs at, for content creators are quite high. And um, the reason I like them for screenwriters, because even if you're just doing features, obviously uh, it's, it's it's interchangeable these days some, sometimes for screenwriters to write for features or television. So podcasting has a very TV-like serialized structure. Plus the fact that there's a ton of opportunity. So um, it's, it's something you should look at. And it might be something that, uh, for me it was, that's something that I had on my radar for a long time. So it took me a while before I figured out my place in it. So um, maybe at the very least, I'm putting it on your radar and you'll see over time if, uh, if it could be one of, the, one of the places you take your amazing writing talent. So let's uh, look at just the, the basics here. Uh, this whole chat here, I'm not gonna deep dive into anything. Uh, I am gonna cover the basics of how you can make podcasting work for you. And then I would, of course, uh, encourage you to dig deeper <laughs> in the areas that uh, appeal to you. Um, first off, do you listen to podcasts? <laughs> it's kind of a prerequisite, just like you would watch the movies that uh, you want to write. Similar, you know, the genres that you want to write, you need to have a knowledge of it, a knowledge base. So I would say the same with podcasting. If you aren't currently listening to a bunch of podcasts, now's the time to start. Um, they're easy to find, by the way. Um, iTunes, Spotify, all the, all of, any place that you would download music, you're gonna find podcasts. And how it could work for you is how you, you would treat podcasts like you treat movie producers. And the ones that you like, you can reach out and pitch them your services. It could be that simple. <laughs> or you can go the other route, which I've taken, and you can create your own podcast. It, it's kind of the glory days of that er also, where, you know, as a screenwriter, it's really hard for me to go and film my script, even if I film a short script, you know, a short movie. Um, I, 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 can, I can sit down and write a book and I can publish it. That's also amazing, something you couldn't do 10 years ago. Well, I can also sit down, write a podcast, I can record it and I can put it out there uh, all by myself. So it does give screenwriters um, a ton of freedom that we don't have when it comes to making feature films. So that's why it's sometimes a really great companion while you are working on your screenwriting career to also be creating podcasts and putting them out there because it does get your name out there as a content creator, as somebody that's creatively amazing. And uh, it's, it's a great way when people Google you that they find stuff that you're working on and creating. Yeah, it's a good thing. You, you can also probably make some money at it, but that's, that's a different lecture <laughs> that gets into marketing. But for now, um, let's talk about still the basics, um, some podcasting statistics. Um, most podcasts are news oriented. Uh, they're interviews, they're about sports, they're people talking about the news, their opinions of the news, and basically uh, newsworthy topics. Uh, but that doesn't mean that audio dramas aren't also important. They are on the rise. And um, as more people find them and 
and get addicted to them and binge them like you would a, t a TV show, uh, they're growing. So it's a good area to start in. Uh, and they range between basically someone reading a book. Um, it's I like to call them an enhanced audio book because <laughs> they can have sound effects and voices to a full on audio theater where you have multiple actors and you're hearing the sound effects and it, it, it it's just like going to a theater and watching a play, except it's just for your ears. <laughs> so well, let's uh, dig a little bit deeper into audio dramas. Uh, I do like to say that it's the wild, wild west. And that means uh, that there aren't a lot of rules, which is even better. You can make up your own rules. But uh, do think ser serialized because obviously you're doing episodes that they tune into. And a lot of them are pretty short content. Um, obviously, if you're if the, the nonfiction podcasts can be a, an hour and a half to a couple hours long because they're doing interviews and, and, and that kind of stuff. But audio dramas tend to range more like a TV show would. They can be some short segments that could be like 15 minutes up to an hour. Um, it pretty much depends on you. I personally like the idea of, um, of like a 20 to 30 minutes because I always think about when people would be listening and if they're in their car, they're doing something around their house, they could put the headphones on and listen to. Usually something that's about 20 to 30 minutes long uh, would fill in that kind of uh, time period uh, and easy to listen to two at a time. Um, I originally started to try to do my... Uh, audio dramas to be more like 15 minutes, but uh, when you add in sound effects and it sometimes it just gets longer. <laughs> so I guess the point is b that it being the wild, wild west that, you know, no one's going to really hold you to some sort of time limit. Um, what's more important is your consistency of, of creating and delivering content. Um, although once again, that's all up to you. So um, when you're writing them though, and especially if you're writing for somebody else's audio drama, you will want to follow the rules that they've set up, which uh, shouldn't be hard to figure out. And it's a lot of like the old serials uh, back in the day that I probably none of us watched, but the, you know, like the cartoons that, uh, that you get to cliffhangers and a bunch of interesting characters. As far as being a screenwriter coming to this, these are dialogue heavy and character heavy, and you can get into things that you wouldn't normally get into in a, a screenplay. So it's a fun um, a tangent for screenwriters because you can work on some skills that maybe you don't always get to use when you're screenwriting. So there are two kinds of audio dramas. Um, at least in my mind. So these are, uh, I'm stating it right now. <laughs> I'm okay to be proved wrong though. But right now uh, there seem to be these enhanced audiobooks where you, they're definitely narrator heavy. They can have uh, other voices voicing some of the characters, but they are more read like, uh, like a, uh, a book uh, with sound effects and maybe music. Personally, that's where I started out because I, couldn't get to a, uh, well, I didn't want to rent an audio, uh, a studio where I could bring in actors and pay for all that. There was a cost to that, that I decided I would start as um, just reading it and doing voices and trying my best to add sound effects. So that's where I started. Um, and so obviously that's an easy way to start if it's, if you're a one gal band or a one guy show, if it's all on you and you're okay with that, Basically, you're doing an audio book uh, that just puts you in the story more. The other way is the audio drama. Now, so that requires, so one of the important things is, and I, I did try to go down this road. I have written a couple of audio dramas. I had, they're good ideas, and I'm still going to find a way to bring them to life. But during this quarantine period, it was very hard. And I reached out to other podcasters, which is a great way, is podcasters have the equipment. They can record a voice, but it's hard to find actors. So having an actor who can voice act is, it's a skill. And um, just having a podcaster do it, it, 
it didn't sound right. I, I did try to create something where I used like three different podcasters who were wonderful to donate their time to this cause. But it was weird. And it was weird to not, I think it was weird to not have them together in a room. So when you edit, end up editing all this audio together where people are actually supposed to be talking to each other and reacting to what they say, it just didn't sound right. So in the audio, uh, audio theater setting for an audio drama, you really do want that old almost radio uh, picture in your mind where you have several actors around microphones that are in the same room and they're acting. They're, they're, they're getting into the scene and they are playing their parts, but it's just all for your ears. So um, the best way, of course, to really understand these two kinds is to go to and and listen to some some of the most popular which are Welcome to Night Vale, The Homecoming and The Bright Sessions. And all of these have gone on to bigger and better things. Homecoming it became a series that is still on Netflix. Welcome to Night Vale, they actually took that on the road to theaters and packed theaters like you know like they were a play they put it on live in front of people. And uh, I think Bright Sessions also I think has been optioned. Um, don't hold me to that, but I think so. So when it comes to doing this yourself, I'm showing you pictures from my home studio. You can do it yourself, but, uh, just to give you, uh, an idea of what it takes, um, here. So here is my, uh, an angle of my office. This is my studio over here. I've hung up this soundproofing, which is old bedspreads. And this is the inside of this area here. If you can watch my little uh, cursor. And this is a close up of this Troy box, Troy Studio box. This is a close up of that. And that's all for soundproofing. It's a microphone. And the, the basic stuff is you need a microphone, you need headphones to um, listen. So in this setup, I also have to bring in my laptop. So I didn't put in you need your computer, but you need a laptop is what you'll plug uh, your microphone into. And you'll record it through, um, there's free software. Uh, obviously, I'm. You know, I'm saying GarageBand because I, I have a Mac. It comes on. It comes on my computer. Um, I use GarageBand, but I also use Audacity, which is free. Um, I think I spelled that right. It looks weird. <laughs> but Audacity is another free uh, program that you can download and edit sound audio. And then once you do uh, all that, which is a, I'm, <laughs> I'm really putting this into a nutshell. I mean, you could do several uh, webinars and sessions about telling you how to, to uh, set up a home studio and then record. But pretty much what, what I do is I write my script. Uh, I, I go into this little area and I record the audio. And then I have to take it on my computer and I have to take several days to edit it down into like a 17 minute show and add in special effects, uh, as in sound effects and music. So the editing process is probably triple the time it takes to actually record it. But the, the, the reason I wanted to show you the, my sound box here, which was, a, I bought this whole system. It, it was like a, you got the microphone and uh, the box, the soundproofing. It's because I learned the hard way that if you don't sound, have a soundproof place to, to record, then you are not going to get a good sound. And you'll hear clicks and background noise and hums and uh, air conditioning. And um, the point is that you can't, you can't really ever edit that out. And the only way to get a good quality sound, which is vital, is if you record it the right way. So uh, that part you have to take seri seriously if you go to that step. All right, where to find podcasts. Uh, I, I did mention this earlier that it's wherever you download your music. Um, iTunes, Spotify are kind of the big ones. There's, there's a lot. <laughs> there's several out there. And the thing is that most of this, most podcasts you can listen to for free. So uh, don't, don't fear just Googling um, like, uh, you know, the best audio dramas of 2020. And you'll probably find some links there to actually listen to them. I'll share my link. Um, this is the audio drama that I've created, which is, like I said, it's sort of an enhanced audio book. It is a YA fantasy. Um, so it's about a college student that finds out she's 
from a family with magical uh, powers in their, in their history. So it's called Lyric, A Mother of a Fairy Tale. And um, you can listen to it for free. Uh, that's the website there, lyric.buzzsprouts. But Buzz, Buzzsprouts is a really good uh, hosting platform. You do also obviously need somewhere to host your, just like you would have a website. Um, Buzzsprouts will host, they can, they save the audio. So for Lyric, it the cost is like $12 a month, which is pretty cheap if you pay for, if you know anything about <laughs> hosting. And um I also have a website called, uh, this one right here, podranger.com, where I, I try to blog a little bit about what I'm doing, and there's also links there to listen for free. <laughs> um, for me right now, uh, I went into podcasting as a way to promote my, my work and my writing. So obviously, I don't, I'm, not work, I'm not looking at making money with it. I'm looking at um, elevating my status as a content creator. <laughs> So whatever path you take when it comes to audio dramas and checking out if this could be a good side hustle for you and uh, to call it a side hustle is kind of misleading because like I said, I'm doing it to uh, promote myself as a, a writer and not, you know, and I, I feel like it's all connected as a screenwriter of uh, anything I can do to get my name out there sort of, uh, will elevate my ability to pitch and sell scripts, uh, as well as set up projects as a producer. And um, down the road, if uh, somebody loves something I've created and it, it gets to have a different life in a different format, well, then I guess it's a true side hustle and it can make some money. But for now, it's a huge, fun, creative outlet and something to add to my resume. Thanks for joining me and learning more about podcasting for screenwriters.